that's why I love Dr. Death. Like a lot of guys don't have, you know, I hear guys that say things about Doc, and I and I I, I try to find it. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what the do they see? Yeah. Like, and I I, I I can't, bro. I like I really enjoy playing for the dude, man. I saw weird. how that could have been weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> there might be more states. <laughs> just, just, he just goes, you're like, what the yeah. are you talking about? It starts with your clap. They don't know that. You start the show. I mean, this is about as professional as we get. Oh, good. Let's do it. <laughs> so, Gil, we have Lou Williams here today. First thing I wanted to know, what, what was the first interaction that you guys ever had? When did you meet? So mine is probably different than his. So we didn't actually meet, right? I was playing for the Sixers, and he's in his prime at this point, and I'm just a young kid trying to figure it out. And uh, it's the top of the fourth quarter. Gil says, which one of y'all guard me? <laughs> and everybody part, uh, everybody. And, and God bless Rodney Carney, right? That's, he was like, me. And he was on minute restrictions. And he was like, I'm guarding you, but I only got three minutes. And Gil said, it's going to be the longest three minutes of your life. <laughs> and that's, that was my first impression of Agent Zero. You know what's so funny? Is that's all I used to do is just talk shit. Because yeah. for the most part, it's... That, you know, that pretty our, much hasn't changed. Yeah, our confidence is what, you know, what is, is, what, is what drives us to, to other levels. So, like... Anytime we played Iverson, and like you know, so funny that was the only matchup I never really, I couldn't outscore that for nothing. Yeah, no, like, I mean shit, nobody can. Like I was, I, you, I mean like, you're not gonna shoot enough. So I was trying though. That was the <laughs> that was the part though. It was like I'm, I'm, yo, I, I got him. And then when I did ball out, he didn't play that game. Yeah. So it, that that kind of like pissed me off though. So it's like, <laughs> <laughs> you know. So I used to just try to talk so much shit to all the rookies and everyone that was coming in, yeah. you know, just to just to get pumped. Yeah. And we were a young team at that time too. That was your rookie year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you were 18. Yeah. Hey, you was the last high. Your, your, your yeah, group was, was the last high school. Yeah. The last high school group that came in. But isn't that really how it goes? Is the older guys are gonna put that in your head that man, you gotta earn this young fella. You know, we're gonna start with the talk <clears> and <throat> we're gonna back it up with our play. Yeah, for 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 me, I didn't I don't talk as much, but I just do little subtle shit to kind of f with your mind. Like especially with my position, I'm coming off the bench, so a lot of times it's gonna be a young guy coming off the bench trying to establish himself, and he's wide eyed, and I know he like. Bro, I'm going to take 20 shots, whether you on the floor or not, right? So my whole thing is, as soon as he come on the floor, I'm looking over at Doc or the point guard just f***ing around. Say, hey, next one for me. Next play for me. Just bring, just bring the ball here. You know, and so it's just it's something in the back of your head. Like some of them are going to say, oh, you got me f***ed. Up. And some of them was like, oh, God, <laughs> like, here it comes, you know. So it's, it's always trying to establish that, that superior, you know, over the, over the younger guys. <laughs> who said you got me f That's a rookie who said you, that? Some of them are like that. Like, uh, um, what's the kid name? In, um, what's his whole name? Jamario Jones. Jamario Jones? Yeah. yeah, he was like, nah, you got me f up. Like, oh, he he's like, I know exactly who you are and what you do, and I'm ready for all of it today. Oh. And he actually, and it, you know what? I couldn't make a shot in the fourth quarter to save my life. And it looked like he was, he was locking me up, and that shit pissed me off. But he was one of them that was like, I'm not going. And you, for it. Gil, you would know it. like that's how you have to be, like him. Yeah. Nah, I was wide-eyed when I got in. But if you knew that, <laughs> if you knew back then how you should be. Yeah, of course. I mean, you way. know, it's either you. I mean, as a rookie, you, you know, you you're trying to figure out. You know, you got to remember these are the stars you you looked up to, you watched, you mimic, and then you go up against them the first time. You know, you're still in that that shaky mode until you know until you know one of them pissed you off or you. You know, you had a good game, and then it clicks over from there. You know, that's what I said. You know, mine was Gary Payton when he, he just got in the defensive stance, and I was so scared I passed the ball. Yeah. I was like, oh shit, <laughs> and just right. and just got rid of it, and was so pissed, and was so pissed off because I got benched mm -hmm. after that. Like, oh yeah, you know, maybe this ain't the game for you. And I'm just sitting there like, damn, that motherfucker has 17 straight points on me and finished with 19. Like, mm -hmm. and he ain't, like you could have not shot against me, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, you could have did that and kept me in the game. And then from there, I tried to torch that man. Yeah. It was one, like, it was one fourth. Like, 
I didn't care what coach called. One full flat if Gary Payton was guarding. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's just that's just how you do it. You've literally been the best player on your teams for psh, last four, five years. And they, they make you the sixth man. Like, at, at, at some point, do you get pissed off or are you just like, whatever? I'm kind of numb to it. You know what I mean? Like, shit, it's been over a decade at this point. You know what I mean? So for me, it's like, it's just, it's who I am. I think that's, that's obviously, that's what I'm going to leave the game as. That's what people are going to remember about me. And so I just took it. I said, you know what? If that's, gonna, if that's what it is, then I'm just going to be the best one. Like, I'm just going to, it's going to get to a point where, like, why, like, like you saying, like, why is this dude not starting? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And the funny, the, the funny misconception about that is, like, I haven't had a coach come to me and say, I think you should start. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh -huh. people think, I'm like, nah, I'm, I'm cool <laughs> on the bench. Like, I have literally had, haven't had a coach has asked me or even in training camp, like, created that position for me. Like, it's, it's, just, it's just weird. I remember, like... The reason I got my start was because of our six man, Bobby Sora, uh, when Larry Hughes went out and they said, all right, Bobby, you're going to start Larry Hughes out. And he was like, nah, 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 start the rookie. I want to stay in the, you know, I want to stay coming stay off the bench because that's yeah. what I'm, I'm comfortable with. And I'm sitting like, all right, whatever. I know when I lost my starting <laughs> job. <laughs> I, was, I was in Philly, got my, I was playing against y'all, matter of uh -huh. fact. Anton Jameson broke my jaw. And uh, I was out, I was going to be out for eight weeks. And I remember I was in the gym working out and um, they came to me and they was like, uh, at this time I'm averaging over 20 points a game for this team. And so they come to me and say, yo, we thinking about bringing AI back. How do you feel about it? And I was, at the time I was like, of course bring him back, that's my hero. Mm -hmm. Like why would I not want you know, my big brother back on my team. And then once I came back from injury, they, we had another conversation like, yeah, we think we're going to have you come off the bench because, you know, it's just not going to be cool to have AI coming off the bench in Philly. And I never got a starting job ever again after that. That's how, <laughs> I, that's how I lost my starting job. But is there ever a point where you can ask for your job? Maybe not ask in the sense of like begging for it, but just like, hey, you got to start me here. Can be better no, off I mean, no, in this position. It, it's never been. It's never really been a, a, a thought for me, cause it's like shit. I, I've always, you know, as cra as cliche as it sounds, like I've always been a team player. So it's like if that's what the team needs from me, then that's what I that's what I do. And you know, over the course of my career, I've done that shit to a fault, kinda. You know what I'm saying? To a to a point where it's kind of stifled what could have been. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And but that's that's just my mo. That's who I am. And, you know, my, my high school coach, he instilled that, that kind of attitude in me, and I just I took it and ran with it. Jamal Crawford is one year in front of me, so I, I got to see, you know, his style. Mm -hmm. And then I remember you in high school, you know, coming in. Um, two different platforms. Yeah, for sure. You know, it was you know, you, you, like he was way you, like he was way up here compared to where he was in high school. You know, especially for a name. So it was like you know, watching Jamal and like he he started a couple years, but then with your skill set, I'm like, wait, how is Monte starting? But they're not allowing right. Lou to start. And then like like each year, you're like, okay, okay, I get he plays the fourth quarter. You know, I, I right. watch you know San Antonio and Ginobili, and you got you know the week one starting first. Like they started that shit with like you remember Roy Ivy. Yeah, come in, play three minutes, and then they right. and then they bring in the real star. And it's like, well, what was the point of that? Right. You know, and and, and it was just like, I just what think is I got point? caught up in a perfect storm. I think for my first three years, it was AI. Mm -hmm. Then I I'm I'm rolling now. I break my jaw, and now I have a teammate in Drew Holiday mm -hmm. that they're also trying to groom and and grow up. So he had that opportunity to to keep moving in those couple of months when I was down, and then you bring AI back. You know, and so that I think that just created the whole, the whole thing in my career where I just never really got a shot. If you're the most dangerous person on the floor in every team you're in, like, I don't know why you're not demanding to be starting. Like I, like I, I know they they try to use that. Well, he's a combo guard, man. Fuck all that combo and right. point and what. Just let me do what I do. Like, right. if I can do it at the end of the game, why can't I do that? at the beginning of the game right. and that's how I always looked at it but you know what for me even in games that I do start the shit is kind of boring to me 
Cause like the first six minutes, everybody trying to find a rhythm. By the time I come <laughs> in, I know who's rolling on their team. Uh -huh. I like I've already made my adjustments by the time I come in, and then fourth quarters it's like it's head it's mano a mano now. So bring your KDs and yeah, 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 everybody yeah. come out and let's and let's get it. But on. see, that's what pisses me off because it's like you have you have a I think probably the financial part for me it, what what makes me yeah. mad is like you know you have a twenty two last year right or this year it was twenty it was I don't know twenty twenty two nine or yeah, something so, like that. Yeah. so twenty three. On 26 minutes, right. if you play starter minutes, you 30, 31, right. max contract. So you have a max player that you're handicapping on the bench. And that's that's the shit I just be like, see, yeah. this that dumb shit right here. You know what I mean? And, and, that, and that's it's just the, the way It's just the way my shit went. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I would drive myself crazy trying to, to figure it out. Do you know what I'm saying? And so that's just how I keep my peace of mind with it. Just, I chalk it up. That's how I went. I'm going into year 15, like I ain't getting none of that money back. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's just, it is what it is. Because I, I remember when like, it was during the playoffs when it was like, oh, that's, they got, they got Lou Williams at a bargain. I've been every single time, bro. Mm -hmm. So I have no faith in somebody coming out and doing right by me. So with that, with that in mind, and also being happy and comfortable and and where I was in LA and and just where I was in my career you know we took we took a deal that was kind of like you know a lot of people were, were scratching their heads on that one but shit made me happy mm -hmm. and so at the end of the day that's what it was about you know my kids love it out here i'm in a position where i can go out and hope do my thing um you know do i deserve more money of course i deserve more money but i was happy at the time you know so that was the conversation we had and that was the decision i made yeah you know that you know when you was when you came to doc you know it was like okay that's a good fit because you know you got sammy over there crazy right. like <laughs> and then so you got you got you got two hoopers with you you yeah. know so you they know understand they, they understand and they not going yeah. they not going to throw wins away trying to they're going to say, hey, give it to Lou, get get the hell out of the way. You know, that's just how Sammy is. So, you know, Sammy's going to relay that shit to Doc, and right. Doc is just going to play basketball. So, you know, it was, it's it's a, it's the perfect fit. And he's going to always, it's like because of the style he plays and he lets you do what you do, it's going to always keep you. So you're not going to have that at 36, 37, you fall off, and now you got to go play and do Vince Carter minutes. Right. Because he's going to always he's gonna keep the ball. He's going to put you in a position yeah. where, where you can be successful. And yeah. that's, why I, that's why I love Dr. Death. Like, a lot of guys don't have, you know, I hear guys that say things about Doc, and I, and I, I, I try to find it. Mm -hmm. like, I'm like, what the do they see? Yeah. Like, and I, 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 I can't, bro. I, like, I really enjoy playing for the dude, man. So, Do you think coming in out of high school so young, do you think where you are now, that hindered you a bit? Because if, if you came in, you had a college pedigree behind you, you had the agent, they had the career plan for you, but you were kind of like, oh, we, we will see how this kid is. No, I don't, no, shit, I was high school, I was Naismith player of the year. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, I mean, as far as, you know, reputation go and all of that, that was in place. I think where it went kind of sour for me is, I was a 17 year old kid going into the NBA and I was I was arrogant about my approach, um, a little naive with the process. So when I went into the workouts, I wasn't in shape, I wasn't ready. Um, I remember one workout in Utah, it was, it was me, Darren Williams, Chris Paul, Aaron Owens in one workout group and they just took turns kicking my ass. And I looked like a real kid um, at that point. And, and I'm also undersized, you know, at, at that time I probably was, you know, six feet, six one and, 160 pounds you know what I mean and so I think a lot of that kind of just went into just naturally being a young 17 year old kid trying out for the NBA so not to mention though I think that's something you can hang your hat on because right. there are a lot of guys like that you, came out of high school I, like I that. mean even to the even to the date there's only two of us you know at that size Sebastian and myself mm -hmm. everybody else that's come out of the NBA are like six five six six uh shooting guards or you got or you got your bigs the Greg Goldens and those guys and and so you know Bassie got Bassie was in the in the lottery I ended up sliding to the second round but it's only been two of us to date to do that mm -hmm. even Monte Monte is still like six four six five mm -hmm. so do you ever look at it this way hey I'm a late bloomer yeah, hell yeah. I, it ain't even late blooming. It's just. It's I just, just think I'm, I'm just. I'm just. Yeah, I'm, I'm. I'm at a point where I understand the game, and I understand how 
to get the most out of myself in it. You know, but that 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 didn't just happen this year. That was a few years back. Yeah, it's been a it's been a work. I think I I start feeling that way uh, probably my first year with the Lakers. So I guess that's that's what year ten or eleven somewhere in there where I just I really started clicking and understood who I was in this game. And Gil has a theory about age that you want to draft a kid that's younger with more upside because you you give him that time to mature. Yeah, because by the time you was because no matter where you are in your career, you was probably averaging double digits by your third year, right? Yeah. Yeah. See, so if you're third year, which 20. So if he's yeah. already in his third year average and, you know, if he's 20 years old in his third year, he's already doing what he's supposed to do. Like by the time you get to your third, fourth year, you're tapping into, you know, what your ability is if you're getting the playing time. So I'd rather get someone who's younger than someone older. Like how many people in your class is still in the NBA? I think it's two of us, three. Yeah, yeah. That, that's... Because he's uh, <laughs> CJ Miles, Amir Johnson, and me. Yeah. yeah. So like that's what I said. So all those players who went to college, they out of the league because of it. Like that's why I said it's the young. But I, I hated I, I hated the whole process of draft. Yeah. Because I remember um, when I was in Orlando, when I did my draft in Orlando or tryout, they were like, uh, "Do you think you're in? Do you think you're in NBA shape?" How and, could I said, you be? and I said, "How the f- am I supposed to know?" Yeah. And he was like, do you think you should be in better shape? I said, when does the season start? And I said, by the time the season start, I will be in whatever shape I'm supposed to be in then. Right. Like, right now, I don't know what yeah, shape I'm supposed to. I don't, how do I know? I didn't know what I was preparing. <laughs> yeah, that's what I you said. I was like, you want me, you're telling me I'm out of shape? I ran five miles a day. I don't, I don't know what kind of shape right. I'm supposed to be in. Like, I'm huffing and puffing because right. this is some new shit for me. My, uh, my, first, my first pre-draft workout was with uh, Memphis Grizzlies. And my workout probably went for 45 minutes. And it was the hardest shit I ever did in my life, right? And then it took me to get drafted and realize, yo, I do that same workout every day. But... It, over time, it was it was nothing to me, but yeah. the first one. Uh-huh. Yeah, 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 you know yeah, yeah, yeah. So you never you don't you don't know how to prepare for this shit until you in it, man. I was so I was so offended because it's like I, I did seventeen workouts. All seventeen are different. Right. Some easy, some hard. So like, how the f- do I supposed to know yeah. if the last f- I did fifteen minutes of shooting? I'm right. thinking it's the same shit over here. What are you talking about now? You want me to do line drills like suicide? Like, I ain't do nothing wrong. Like I like, like yeah, I'm like, offended. I, I ran, I ran 17s in Detroit. And now, and now I look back, like what was the, the point? point of that yeah, that, yeah, like why am I running? What am I running 17s for? Yo, they hate. That's what I said. I came in into the draft. Like I was cocky for no reason. I like I was a, I didn't even have a name. Like I wasn't. I was just cocky for no reason because most of the drills is one on one, and that's all I was waiting for. Yeah. Like that's all. Like all this shooting shit all that running up and down when and we what, get that what happened ball when you, uh, ball. when you were on the treadmill huh oh yeah we did the, you remember the tread heart well, treadmill yeah. what did you wear for three minutes for footwear oh I had chucks on like I didn't take none of that I didn't take none of it here I thought it was just a bunch of bullshit like right. I don't give a f- who's number one two three ten but yeah. we got to get on the court they got to play defense and we're gonna see then yeah you know and that's that's just how I looked at it. so the whole process was just gimmicky to me uh, you want me to sit here and run up and down and do these drills? And then we play one on one. All right, I scored all seven. That way. What is it about Lou? I think that people don't appreciate. You know, it, I think it's the whole concept of this this type of basketball, right? I, I'm starting to hate. Everyone in the 90s that played basketball, that whole group, because they, they, they just think they shit don't stink. Right. Like, you know, you got, you know, Scottie Pippen and Dennis Rodman, both 6'7", both weigh 210. <laughs> Talking about they're going to stop somebody in today's game. Like, nah. 6, 7, 2, 10, like, you are a little guard in, in today's right. game. You guys are little guys. Like, but that's, the, every 10 years, the game changes. Yeah, that's what I said. They have no idea about evolution. It's like, they don't take we, evolution. I, had, I always have these debates with my friends. I was like, bro, can you imagine dropping LeBron in the 75? <laughs> like, just drop LeBron now that you know in 75. I was like, bro. Yeah, that, that, that's what they just they, <laughs> it's like they forget evolution. So they're like, well, this, year, this, this game's soft. They flop too much. I think it's more skill.
you have to understand rules, right? So if a player can get you in foul trouble because you're always out of place, right. that's a skill. And I said, it's not a flop, it's a skill. If I know I'm gonna drive here, and I know your speed is gonna try to beat me there, and I stop, you hit me, and I shoot, that is my skill. That's what I'm skilled at. And I don't think anybody really appreciates the skill. They call it, oh, he's flopping too much. Oh, this is boring. Like, no, that's... But you that's know what people, their reaction is? They don't know how you do that because they can't think like you think. They didn't so, have to. Because yeah. it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't like, little. They didn't, they didn't have to. I mean, first, they, uh, in the 90s, they were averaging like 80, 90 points a game. Mm -hmm. Like, we're doing 135s and 140s now. You know, and that's because of the skill level. So they didn't they didn't have to figure out how to get to the free throw line. It was like whatever whenever we score. I think it was more of a stops game in the 90s anyway. It was a big man game. It's yeah. everyone and, wanted to pull. Right. Everyone, no, you know, you had post up with the you, yeah. you had post up guards. You got to remember, guards back then weren't scores. You know, except that, for Jordan. I mean, but like point guards. Right. So yeah, you know, yeah. you're talking about Gary Payton, you know, he was still considered a point guard. Back then, as soon as AI comes in, it's like uh, well, you know, it's funny. Throw, throw them to the two. We well, don't, yeah, we don't know what that know is. What we do don't know them. what that is yet. Right. You know, you, you're talking about, you know, Mulberry averaging, you know, 22 and nine. He was considered a ball hog. They're like nine assists. He was a ball hog. The Stevie Francis, like, like that's what I said. So when I came in, I was a combo guard. I wasn't either. You know, it's just get out there and we're going to see what he can do. And then from there, it just starts opening up. So it's like, Everybody became skillful. It wasn't just the shooting guard in the center. You know, so it's like, you know, back then your 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 power forward was anywhere from 6'4 to 6'8. You know, so these guys talking about, oh, I'm gonna stop you. Like that that nobody no. even plays that Actually, dinosaur as basketball anymore. The what the what was about? the expression back then? Defense wins championships. Yeah, no, defense wins. Skill wins championships. Defense oh. wins championships. Like you you were stopping who can't like Anthony Mason, what what, what is he gonna do? <laughs> like, what, like really, what is he gonna like? He's six six. Like club you. Like, that's yeah. Westbrook right now. What the mm. fuck? That, like come on. Like that's just, that that, that got. Really like what's that, so yeah. funny is that position got removed because of Shaq. All these centers in college coming in, centers mm -hmm. in high school, KGs, v Van Horns are like I'm not with him. Right. I'm gonna go to the four man, go against the guy who's six four. And then the four man became this long guy and it took away the center. So I said every position became skillful. So like when the 90s talking about, oh yeah, y'all soft, you know, we would have we would have put y'all on your ass. Yeah. You you're a little, you're a little kid. Like you're we gain weight when we get older. These are 60, 70 years old, 185 pounds still. Like, come on, <laughs> shut up. You're 185 is like, like I was afraid of you my rookie year. I don't know why. Like you're you're little, like John Stockton. You guys are little. Right. Like you guys, like like you guys are deep. These are defensive guys. Like they became like it became a joke. Like it's like like put the two guard on me, man. These little these point guards are just too little. Yeah. And that's what people don't understand. Like evolution, evolution. Like like no, like these guys are just too little. Like. You're not gonna hurt us. Like but you, you know what? We're gonna do the same shit in 20 years. Like, yeah, 20 years, like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you're right. That's yeah. what happens. <laughs> oh, that's, that. that's what happens. Like, I'm gonna lock that up. Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna do the same. Like, they somebody, my day, somebody asked me, like, yo, man, like, you, you, how would you do in this uh, era? I said, to be honest, um, <clears throat> <laughs> to be honest, this is shaking and baking now. Like, before, when I played, we was just trying to score. Right. These trying to embarrass you now. Like, these <laughs> Like Kyrie's out here trying to shake your boots off. No, thank you. I was not trying to play defense in my era, let alone trying to come in this era and try to play some defense. Like, imagine trying to guard James Harden every play. Oh, man, I'll be mad. Like, I would have hated to guard James Harden. Yeah, but there were guys in your, like, Iverson. I had to guard, I had to guard Eric yeah, Snow. Oh, yeah, who you had to guard. But guys Eric Snow, Eric Snow. Chris but Paul, was, but it was just Jason like, Kidd. Hey, I know. There's like Kobe. I didn't have to guard. Him. I know you didn't have to guard, but like there were guys that were tough covers back then. Though. But those are like those are like those are team offensive covers. But those are also all time hard to guard players. But this team, team offensive, like but like AI what, was though? running around. But it's different because every once in a while, Kobe had to come down and throw that bitch to Shaq mm -hmm. and chill for well, a second until Shaq. James don't have to Shaq throw it to nobody. nobody. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like every like <laughs> think about it. Like think. <laughs> Every play 
He's he gonna come action. down and he is literally doing a bop move on you. Like you were at Rucker Park and that's your enemy and he's coming down like, like You should know your style. As a player, you know your style of play. I'm not gonna try to be, you're not gonna try to be Vince Carter. But you know what, that also was at a time where it was, an, it was like, you can't win without two stars. You know, that was the that was the conversation at that time. Super teams. Yeah, it was, right. super, it was still super teams. But if you create your own style, try to don't try to copycat everybody. Create your own style. Know that because right. you'll have that stronger than anybody else. Absolutely. Like right now, you guys, well, you got Kawhi. Who, who's left? Kawhi. Jimmy Butler hasn't signed yet, right? Basically, everybody hasn't. Everyone's anything. still, right. everyone's still Except free? Except for Anthony Davis, yeah. Free agency starts on the 1st. Oh shit! That's why I'm, I'm stupid. I'm like, damn, these ain't signing shit. What the f- <laughs> what you doing, man? <laughs> we just had the draft. July first. Okay, yeah, July first. Yeah, yeah, my bad. My bad. I, I was wondering. That's why I said these ain't signing. Like, I thought some news. You know what's funny is we don't have the patience. Like the, though, the season just ended. I just, I, I just, I forgot July first is when free agency. We've been talking about free agency like, all like all year before last season even started. But like, who fits your? St- you guys are style. We thought we thought KD was gonna give us what we needed, how we played. Mm. We thought KD was gonna be like, like that was one I was gonna get involved in. Like, yo, <laughs> like this would be recruit. Perfect. You know what I'm saying? It's, I think it's it's just it's an opportunity for guys like him, you know, to to put another put another notch on a belt. Mm-hmm. You know, it hasn't been a championship in in LA uh, as far as the Clippers go. Um, you know, you have Blake, DeAndre, and you have Chris. You know, they're gonna go down with they with their jerseys up, and then you got guys that can really come in and create their own. Especially KD, where everybody's like, "Oh, he went there to get the rings." Like F- that, he, those are his rings. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, you can come here, and this one can be considered yours. Yours. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And and we don't like we. The the great thing about our team is we're not confused about who who any of us are. You know what I'm saying? It's like in the fourth quarter, we're going to get a ball to Lou. We need to stop. Pat, you're going to guard the best player. Mm-hmm. Like everybody understands it's a pecking order. Mm-hmm. So if a KD came in, it, it's no pushback. Like it's never going to be a de- – like, mm-hmm. bro, this is your team, and we riding, and everybody going to play their part perfectly. And so I thought he was going to be the person um, that was going – that could fit it in, like, seamlessly. Mm-hmm. But I think you drop Kawhi on any team, you have a chance, man. What are you thinking? No, I'm just, you know, just, <clears throat> because, you know, it's like, you know, when you're when you're playing, you know, GM, you know, everybody wants names instead of people who actually, you know, fit with the rest of the team. So, you know, you just sit there and think about all the free agents. It's like, all right, you know, we know your your team style. Like, who is a perfect candidate for him? I mean, the guy you, I loved yeah. was the guy that, that left, Tobias. Yeah, Tobias was good for us, too. <sighs> I mean, that's what I said. He's a, he, that, it's like, a name game. Yeah, that's what I said. It's a name game. So if Tobias and Katie are going to ask for the same type of money, of course you're going to try to create the money to go get KD. What is, what is the thing about the Clippers that maybe people are wrong about or don't know? As an organization. Oh, yeah, because you a new Clipper. Oh, you a new Clipper. So you got you to gotta break... The the curse of who the Clippers were yeah, when I came I, in. No, we got a I, we've created a, a dope culture. You know what I'm saying? I, I just that's I think it started with Doc. You know what I'm saying? Um, he expects a lot. He has a high expectation level, and we just so happen to have the personalities that fit in with that. You know, like we don't have a lot of disagreements about about anything. Like the work environment is positive. Um, shit, we got rookies that listen. They work hard, you know. Shay, Sham, Jerome, and um, uh, Sin going into his going into his uh, second or third year now. Like our young guys really soak up the information, and we like we don't have the ego problem. So I guess that's what that's what works for us. I think people are wrong. What, what shit? They thought we were a thirty win team. Um, end up winning forty eight with with no quote unquote all stars and all of that. And I think we're gonna be good for a very long time. I think they showed this year. When I came in, you know. There was really no culture. 
there was really nothing. There was no reason to stay in a gym. So I remember going to, you know, you know, RIP, you know, Mr. A. Poland and said, hey, you know, we need, um, we need like breakfast. You know, we like, like a chef, like breakfast, lunch, you know, um, like a player's lounge. And, you know, the question was like, why don't, don't we, we don't pay you guys good enough? You know, we just gave you 65 million. What, what do you need? What kind of food do you think we eat? McDonald's? Burger King, that's what, that's, yeah, I, I said, that's the kind of food we actually eat. We don't know nothing about the chef. So, so we're, after practice, we're going to go get McDonald's and do all of that. And, you know, that's our food. So, you mm -hmm. know, if you put into the product what you want out of it, it helps it. You know, so you get a, get us a chef. Now, some of the young kids, they're going to come, they're going to get, they're going to get breakfast here and then they get lunch. And now you gave them two good meals. You put a player's lounge in, now, now they're going to stay a little bit longer. They're not just hurry up, rush and get into their house. So it's like the little things, like you want your player to get better, give him an atmosphere right. where he wants to be comfortable. Like this is, the, the gym is his home. Like he wants to be in here. He wants to sit in the gym getting better. And I don't think they understood that at first. Right. It's like, because I remember when we first got food, it was in Cleveland. Yeah, I think my first time was... Getting food on the road? Like Atlanta. Yeah. So damn near... <laughs> Eight nine years. Yeah, yeah, that's what I said. Yeah. It's like it was like 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 I remember when we was in uh we played Cleveland, and and went in the locker room and they got all these trays. Mm -hmm. Like damn, yo, thank you, this is okay. Yeah. And it was like nah, this from the other team. Like damn, damn, Brian, get over there. <laughs> Want to act right? You know, yeah. you lift up the food. Like damn, this is some good ass food. Grilled <laughs> fish. You up grilled, so they can uh, slow you down though. But it's funny though, man. But I'm just saying. Yeah. But as a as a as. As players, we look at that though. Yeah, mm -hmm. that leave an impression. Yeah, you leave an impression. The other, you leave an impression lives, on the right. player. And like, but ain't nobody never went to Cleveland free agency. That no, 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 no. <laughs> very true. Very, very uh, true. <laughs> dude. Nah, That's I, the thing. I mean, nobody Clippers, going to Milwaukee, Minnesota. Had, like, dude, uh, you got to trade us there, goddamn it, because we ain't just walking into that <laughs> for real. Let's face it, it was a terrible owner. It was ownership. So when Steve Ballmer came in, no, 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 that's what it, really no, 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 no. The NBA, the so, okay. so my first, my my free agent year, two thousand two, two thousand three. Yeah, it was two thousand three. So David Stern yeah. heard um, that uh, Donald Sterling wasn't going to pay his free agents. Right? He's going to let them all walk. And when I said all, it was seven of them. So you had yeah, Lamar Odom, um, Maggette. Um, Elton Brand. Elton Brand. Darren Davis. No, Brent, Darren Brand wasn't there yet. It was. It was just all that. It was all the bump. Oh, there's Miles. So there's Miles. Richardson, so right, so right. it was just. They were all. And he was just gonna let them all walk. And the, 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 the yeah, the league stepped in and said, no, 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 no. You're gonna have to pay. <laughs> that you're gonna have to pay. You're gonna have to pay some of these players. And then that's what ended up happening. That he had to finally release some of that money because from there it was just a farm. But how how does somebody like that get in in the first place? Oh, okay. they, they, come on! It's like this. No, you talking about you talking about these of dollars? No, 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 no. These to people, be an owner, these man for sure. It's a lot of money. Then oh, then not so much. A, a, he got a team from my, my owner bought the team for a million dollars. Right. The first time they signed a big free agent was two thousand two, two thousand three. Then that was the first time he actually threw money. Other than that, all his number one picks and all that come in, go out, come in, go out. He never, he never, and that's that's why there's always lockouts and shit. Because mm. they, the, the Indianas and all, they wanted to be like Donald Sterling. Yeah. But Steve Ballmer did did pay up and did see that he had to create a culture. Yeah, I think but, that's, but that's what I'm saying. By thing. now, now, yeah. like you, you can't sit there and try to farm anymore. Yeah, but also if you want, I mean, look, nah, you know, he's this like too. he's dead serious on winning. You know, I like he's a competitive person like it's a winning a, business yeah right? we spend like, a lot of time yeah. with him like it's not just a, a hobby for him like so he, so he's a real that, yeah that, he's into the shit that's what i said like, like that's a, what he said before there's very few that are there, like there that. was because yeah, you gotta remember back then few, but, yeah back then it was just businessmen now you know these young or these guys that watched basketball growing up mm -hmm. You know, made billions. Like I want to buy me a team, and yeah, I want to. I think he has he has that in his personality, mm -hmm. but it's on the side of like, I want to win a fucking championship. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what I'm saying? That, like yeah, he wants to. And he's he has a dream. Uh, he's dead serious. Mm -hmm. Like we meet with this man probably once a month, and he's like, "What's up? What y'all need? Everything good? Mm -hmm. What y'all thinking? You know what I'm saying? So he's he's very hands on mm -hmm. with trying to create the right culture to to and have. Everything that you would need to bring in players to want players to be here where this would be a destination.
you, at this point, you've seen that Toronto, where yeah. they, where that went this year. I mean, they Toronto's created, a dope organization. Yeah, as well, it's like too. you wouldn't have thought they could yeah. ever make basketball. I don't the think they ever signed free agents up there, but I once you're there, yeah. the, the problem they're gonna have is trying to keep Perfect. guys there. Who they, yeah. they signed a surge, I think they got a deal. That was probably the. He, yeah, but they Africa. foreign anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> like once you're there, you'll love playing for the Raptors. You love playing for the, for the country because it's, it's the whole country. You. It's the whole country, and then you you kind of you like that fourth fifth month into the season, you like, God damn man, like, <laughs> I want to go home. <laughs> you know, like because you really feel when you play in Toronto, you feel like you're playing overseas. Oh, it does. It feels like it, bro. Like. We can't wait to go on the road sometimes just to be in America. And then you have kids, you, you're raising your kids out of, in Canada, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, once you're there, you're like, oh, this is dope. But the hard part is keeping guys there. Yeah. But that's what I said. It's, like, it's not like they brung in free agents. They, tr they, they made smart trades. Mm -hmm. You finally put the team, like the team is on a map where everyone got to see the atmosphere of what, what it looks like Who created over there? that atmosphere? Drake. Yeah. But no, no, no. The, the, yeah. It was already. They were already uh, nuts before. I think he gets. I think he gets. Uh, he gets some credit, but the, you got to get that to Cal and Demar, man. Nobody but Cal and Demar. Nobody was paying attention to Raptors basketball until they just put that shit on their shoulders and were like, we, "We're gonna be a contender." But For the, sure. You know, Drake made it. I think Drake made it popular. Like he. Like, you know, you, we got to remember, outside of basketball, outside of basketball, nobody okay, really... Okay, I see what you're saying. You know, yeah, no, it's just... He created the six and mm -hmm. all of that. I, I the get OBL, what It's just like, okay, for, yeah. like for this, like, worldwide, people to look at... But he really, like, basketball. honestly, like Ice Cube, he put himself front row. He's there at pretty damn near every game. He's his on camera. His fans but take he over. Knew, he wanted to make... He's like, look, they could be a basketball team. I'm going to make this team... Culturally but, relevant, but that's the pro but see that's the problem because to the basketball player who has to leave here to go there, you're not going. It's still, for, it's still not like there's nothing Drake is gonna do to get put American. You a, put you in a song. No, I mean, what, what did that do for you? It made me more popular. But did that tie you to the team more? No, no. They let me go. <laughs> no, I know, but like <laughs> at the I, I time wanted, before, I, yeah, that well, didn't I end so six well. Man, and they rewarded me by yeah. letting yeah. me walk. Yeah. Go, but that's what I said. Thank but you. it's still not nah, a place where like I shouldn't do that. <laughs> like that's what I said. Drake, like Drake fans can. Get it didn't you put it didn't put money in your pocket or like get your oh yeah, name the Raptors, but 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 for the you, six like, man made the prices go out of. But you preference, but <laughs> shit, yeah. you think I got paid because. Jay Z said, no, "Bring guns to the locker paid, room." But you feel like, oh, I ain't got a sponsor. Shit, what's wrong with you? Fuck about the rapper saying your name. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, I mean, obviously, you get a reference in the song, but it doesn't mean. But it gave me a lot of weird ass fans. <laughs> yeah, right, you fans. That's what I'm it gave, it gave me fans get, that weren't my fans. Yeah. That's, what they, that's what I'm saying. It's they liked me because he he thought I was cool. Cool. Yeah, that's what I said. It's Canadian, like. He made it. He made it popular between the teams, but and as the a basketball, end, that ain't, that's not going to be enough to make guys go up there. A and basketball, sign. like that's what yeah. I said. A basketball, <laughs> a basketball player is not going to say, "All right, I'm gonna go to Canada because of Drake's there." It's a couple. It's a couple that do that weird shit though. He ain't gonna be good. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, that's probably the wrong reason. <laughs> you ain't gonna be good. Like you can f around get Alonzo Ball up there. You ain't gonna get nobody good. Like like we really gonna be balling. Like somebody gonna have his 30 40. Nah, I'm stay here in America and do that shit. It's worse <laughs> to play for the Raptors than the opposing teams, cause we come in on the bus and we gonna leave. When you play for the Raptors, you gotta we park our cars at the airport, then get on a bus, go to the airport. So when we land, we can get our cars. Like that shit is an inconvenience, man. Mm -hmm. Expecting this <laughs> ten degrees out there. <laughs> like, <laughs> so let's say ending up in New L. A. is a great thing that could happen to you. Yeah, it was good. For you or any other <laughs> player. Good. They were putting the recruitment pitch out there. This is the most fun I've had in my career last since I've been in LA. Was it? Yeah, no bullshit. You know, when I was playing, it's like, you know, you just when you just hear Clippers, you just it's just because I know what the Clippers were when I was here. So that's why I was like, you know, what what is the atmosphere? Who the owner? Is he 
the yeah. noose. Because it's like the noose, like when people say, yo, yeah, you know, the players are messing up the NBA by super teaming. Like, nah, it's the owners. These new owners coming in, they like, yo, I want to win. I want, you know, let me, so I got to buy you. I'm going to buy you. I'm going to buy you. I'm going to buy Like, I'm paying everybody. Let's go. Let's try yeah. to win this thing. And that's what the new owners is doing. Before, it's like, you know, you sitting here, rec- like, you've been in the summer. We're like, yo, hey, we cool. We've been playing well together. Hey, I'm going to talk to the owner. You know, we're going to come and get you. You're like, all right, cool. We Everybody done done that. Free agent, playing together. Go to the owner. Hey, Dwayne Wade want to come here. Oh, Dwayne? I can get you done, Levy. And like Dwayne Wade, now he got to go to Chicago. Like, yeah. and that, But that's the silly shit they do. Like, oh, yo, it's... No, we friends like they, we this we hey we can build some shit like why, and why the old heads act like they wasn't cool like how we cool now like they don't want you like ah oh, they too friendly they working out like bullshit you <laughs> all right they work out together y'all gamble together what's the difference mm-hmm. I think just because they're on TV now like when yeah. it, when when Charles Barkley talks about ball pounding ever. I just want to open the rule book. I would, they, they, that's why they don't want me on TV. I'm going to open up the rule book. Like, hey, 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 look, this you. Uh, they put this rule in because you, you was you took the ball at the three-point line in the corner and you bounced that mother 42 times trying to back a mother up. So they put a five root count root because of you. Yeah. You dribbled the ball too goddamn much and they put a rule in because of you. Mother. So don't talk about nothing about dribble. I don't want to hear you say dribble. And they dribble too much in the, in the league because you were the reason that they changed rule. Like, but they forget. Real shit. Like I went at, I went, remember I went at um, Kareem Abdul Jabbar on my Instagram because he was talking about um, the was, Ball Brothers. But that's what I said. The list old, rules back then in that they, era. They forget. They forget what they did. It's like, like who you are now is not what you did back then. God damn it. You know what happens is you look at the game differently when you're not playing. Not again. Not now. Now, now all the now all the guards switch. Like, ah, <laughs> we gonna do it. When you're in it, yeah, you're just focused on what it is now. I think when guys retire, it's turned down enough. No, it's just delu- you're delusional. You're delusional. As I said, it's, de- it's delusion. Uh-huh. That's these mo- these '90s players is delusional. Oh, remember, yeah, they remember it a certain way. Oh, you know, the, you know, as as these kids get younger, man, you got that they got the Google shit, right? Uh-huh. So you'll pull up a coach. <laughs> Nowadays we'll pull up a coach like Yeah. Nah. <laughs> yeah. Nah, no. Could he really play? No, cuz a lot of them couldn't play. You know, it was one I ain't going to say his name, but we had, we pulled this shit up on the plane. We like, bro, shut the up, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you average two points a game, but he brought that shit on his because he was the asshole coach. He always he got some slick to say. Mm-hmm. Come up in front of the plane, like why are you up here with us, man? Mm-hmm. So we mm-hmm. pulled this shit up. He was mad for like a month about that. It wasn't misunderstood. It was just like you ever talk to somebody. It's like the '90s was like the best thing. Like Michael Jackson, Prince. Like the music was better. Like everything wasn't better in the '90s. Like like you like we played defense. No, y'all didn't. You just had. Because y'all couldn't hacked stop. The shit out of him. Yeah. That's all you did. You hacked because you couldn't stop. You couldn't stop Jordan, so you just clotheslined him. That, that's all you did. That ain't defense, yeah. bro. That ain't defense. <laughs> like, like you can get that shit at the beach. You can get that shit at the <laughs> beach. <laughs> the mailman does that. He can't stop none of these out there, so he just tripping and clipping that's all day. Talking about yeah, this this '90s basketball. That's all the ball is doing, man. Stupid. Like, that's what I said. It's like, yo, shut the. Up, you guys are not as good as you. You the defense wasn't as good as you thought it was. Or just respect the way things are now. Be happy that That's they are the way that, they that, are. The only reason there's a battle is because they're not respecting. Yeah. Like it's like you're not. You like, think they oh. got something to do with the money though? Yeah, it's always big time. <laughs> it's, it's, it's always the money because it's like, oh yeah, we we laid our foundation. Cool. Hey, bro, I appreciate it. But. Like I, I came out the vagina at a, at a time where it, it paid me more. Don't don't get mad at me. I didn't do nothing. I, I watched you. I learned. Mm-hmm. I added my little shit. I got paid. Now these mm-hmm. doing the same thing. I can you know I made one eleven. That was good then. I make two twenty now. It's right. double. Also, shit is more expensive nowadays. Hmm? Houses are more expensive here in LA. You gotta get paid better. Hey, it's so a more popular game. It. It's yeah, a more popular respected. game year after year. That's, That's all. And these are the guys that built it. It grows. It grows. It's, just, mm-hmm. it's gonna continue to grow. Mm-hmm. Like I said, twenty years we're gonna be looking like that getting a half a billion. <laughs> Yo, man, I said, I said, damn, somebody, somebody's <laughs> gonna be at a half a billion. Like yeah. God damn, that 
What can you do? Average 17. <laughs> <laughs> when I seen JJ Reddick 23 and me, I said, God, <laughs> damn. Shit, I need, to, I need to swallow my pride and start working out again, goddamn, because hey, this <laughs> is this. Whoa, shit. Should have kept that knee right. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. All right, well, I think Lou has a role. Um, this was cool. Thanks for coming. Yeah, man. Hey, hey, I'm going to say congratulations again, Six Man Award. Congratulations yeah. again, man, you know. Appreciate it, man. Was this number three coming up? Yeah, this is going to be three. Yeah. It's there supposed it is. to be. We'll see yeah, what happens. No, nah, this is three. Right. If, you, if he could vote. He has your vote. It's gonna be a ride yeah, if it ain't. We got twenty two. Right. Should he have more than? It's a no brainer. Seventy five percent of the he starters. Ha- he like, has come your on. Vote. Ain't we ain't gonna play that game right now. Put it out there right now. Yes, sir. Appreciate y'all. Man. <laughs> right. See now, I, I want to be a six man so bad. Like, <laughs> got trophies. So, like, no, I just thought about it. He said three trophies. I'm like, man, there's some nice there's trophies in the trophy room. I ain't got none, nothing. Shit. I ain't got a trophy to sit on. <laughs> Shit, if somebody asked like, yo, I'm gonna do an interview with you, put your trophies in the back. I ain't got no fing trophies, there ain't no fing trophies for the shit I was doing. Shit, like nothing. That's cool, three big ass but you, trophies. But you culture though, so that's like. No, no, <laughs> man, I'm listen, you like the hardware. But that shit go a long way. Like, Nick, like, Swaggy is culture. These <laughs> really cut their hair and shit like him. Like, he's culturally. Is part of the imprint of basketball. You the same. All right, you you do it. You do an interview. You. you do an interview and let that motherfucker do an interview at his house. See who's more viewed. That yeah. who got three big ass trophy trophies in the back. There's three big ass trophies talking about. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, you know I had a good career. I'm in the back on the couch. Nothing back there. <laughs> <laughs> nothing. Just a gun yeah, charge. Yeah, a gun charge. Yeah. That's all I got in the back yeah, of my resume. Is a gun charge. Like I said, you get cultured. <laughs> <laughs> Something for the rest. Uh, all right, man. You enjoy your weekend. Yeah, I'm about to go party a little bit. All right. Go hang out. Man, I, hey, man, I used to be young, man. I got like six months left. <laughs> <laughs> Finna milk my shit. Do yeah. your thing. All right, thanks for coming. Appreciate you. All right.